Yo, what is up, Big Blue? What is cool? Man, we've got the Indianapolis Colts today. My hometown. I'm super excited to get into this one. I've got some things to talk about with the Indianapolis Colts, how we're going to fix this team this offseason, and ultimately we'll go through free agency, the roster, cap situation, and get into that seven-round mock draft. So here we go. I can't wait. Chris Ballard, we'll talk about the whole GM, the coaching staff, Jeff Saturday coming in. They need paid Manny Marvin Harris. So then just get Dwight Freeney out there. Get the whole crew back together again. Starting though with the offensive roster and how we need to take a look at some team needs here in just a minute. But here is the roster and my grades. They're not perfect, but I have watched a ton of games of Indianapolis being that they're on every single week. I've seen a good chunk of this season and we'll go in to the team needs on the offense side of the ball and starting with the quarterback position. The most obvious, they need a quarterback of the future. This team has tried over the years with veterans, picking up guys in trades. It hasn't worked out. It is time where they need to go out and actually draft someone and hopefully be able to find their quarterback of the future. No more. I know this is where Chris Ballard and some other areas that he gets really talked about. I think, okay, let's just talk about Chris Ballard real quick to get this out of the way. I think you should keep Chris Ballard. I still think he is a really good GM. He finds talent. You look throughout this roster at some of the draft picks that he has found later in drafts and throughout, he has done a good job evaluating talent. Ultimately, there's been some bad decisions made and every GM goes through some bad decisions. I still think he's a premier GM with some recency struggles and some, you know, little offsides with some guys that he's either traded for or try to avoid certain positions and things like that. So there's some things he needs to get better at. But ultimately, I think he's a good GM and you want to keep him because I still think he's better than at least 10 GMs out there that I could probably name right now. So I'm not letting Chris Ballard go. That's my opinion. Going back to the offensive team needs, getting a quarterback of the future, it's very obvious. Matt Ryan has not looked the same. Yes, the pressure has been in his face for a good chunk of this season. We'll talk about the offense line here in a minute. But Matt Ryan has not been nearly as accurate. He's lost his arm strength. He just really cannot get the ball out. He cannot get the ball deep and really stretch the field. Alex Pierce, who really fits that mold, and he's made some really nice plays with Alex Pierce this year. It's just not been consistent enough and opened it up. Like Teams are to the point where it's like, we know you're going to throw short now, so we're just going to bring everybody up in the box and guard you there. So they need to start stretching the field a little bit more. And you got guys like Alex Pierce, who has looked really good at points of this season, and I think he'll get even better as he just develops and overall into his game everywhere across the field. I think he could even be this team's number one going forward. Pittman's still the team's number one. He's been the most consistent receiver, so he's been really, really good. The big thing I will say... You have got to bring Paris Campbell back. I know the injuries have been a concern with him, but to me, he looks good. I think he could legit be like a really good receiver. I know he's been really confined to playing in the slot this season. He can play on the outside. I think it's just a matter of him staying healthy for a full year, getting his footing under him. He has a lot of potential to be this team's number one too. Like this guy can... He's a good route runner, and he's got good speed, too, to be able to make plays after the catch. I love Paris Campbell and definitely am prioritizing bringing him back. Now, fourth receiver-wise, it's Mike Stretchen. You have Austin Dolan, too, who's who had a nice touchdown grab. Actually, it was kind of wide open. Trevon Dix trying to jump it there, but he didn't get you. Ha, 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 sucka. Anyway, uh, you got those kind of your rotation of five receivers. KKQ team, kind of been a special team throughout the year until Dallas Flowers stepping up lately over these past few weeks. Had a nice return versus Pittsburgh. Anyway, uh, that is their receiving core. It's actually not bad. And as I was saying, I think that they've drafted well. It's just Paris Campbell hadn't been able to stay healthy. They don't have a number one maybe at this point. But between their receiving core, Alex Pierce, and Paris Campbell, Michael Pittman, and Kylan Granson, and Jelani Woods, who's looked really good as well. They have some weapons. Jonathan Taylor, Deion Jackson stepped up too as a reliable third down option and maybe even just more than that. He's a free agent restricted. They'll be able to bring him back no problem. So I feel great about the running back room. We don't even really need to talk about it. I know Jonathan Taylor's had a bit of a down year. Not worried. He's a good running back. It's partially because the offensive line struggles, the quarterback struggles, team stack in the box. They know what's coming. You get him into a better situation and things will change really quickly. Jonathan Taylor, injuries... I'm not too worried about that either, long haul. 
you got to go ahead and improve this offensive line in the quarterback position. Those are the number one priorities. Real quick, I do want to talk about Jelani Woods and Kylan Granson because Kylan Granson seems to me like a really good slot hybrid H tight end, whereas Jelani's maybe your more inline Y guy who can stretch the field vertically, get the ball in his hands because the dude can rumble and he is tough, physical to tackle. It's a great one-two pairing that they have going forward in the future, and I really, really like that compliment. They need to get Jelani Woods over Mo Ali Cox towards the end of the season get him more reps because I think Mo Ali Cox is someone you can let go. He's kind of struggled a little bit this season. We really haven't seen a whole ton of Mo Ali Cox. He's had a couple of critical plays. He's missed and fumbles, some things like that. So overall, Kylan Granson, Jelani Woods, those two guys, you want to see them going forward being featured in that tight end room. I like it a lot. So between their receiving core and tight end, while they may not have a true number one at the moment, they've got good weapons and supporting cast for a young quarterback. It's about shoring up this offensive line and making sure we get a new offensive line coach in here, someone we feel good about, and also fixing a couple things like the right guard position, bringing in a tackle to be able to compete with Bernard Ryman, who I really do like coming out of Central Michigan a lot. I think he is a dude that's going to work on his craft and he's going to get better. Just what I saw from him at Central Michigan, it's just right now he is not ready. And you can clearly see it. He does not have the anchor strength. And also, like, he just is not technically there. Like, he'll do a great job. And I went through the All-22 on Bernard Ryman strictly and watching him and his technique. He'll get out of his stance. He looks great. But then when contact arrives, he starts lunging. And he'll miss so many times. The edge rusher gets to his outside shoulder, beats him, and if not, they'll bull right through him. There's been many examples of him just getting run over like a freight train and ending up on the ground. He has a lot of things he has to work on with his timing, with his overall strength and anchor. That is a big thing. Offense lineman coming into the NFL, though, it is tough, and you really need a season or two. I see Bernard Ryman, though, as a guy who can develop and will get better, like a Colton Miller or like a Garrett Bowles in his career. At the same time, I'm not banking on it, and I want to make sure that you're bringing in extra talent. In this case, I'm probably looking to bring in a free agent rather than drafting someone early. Uh, the opposite side, Braden Smith's a good player. He's not you know, maybe the greatest pass protector. He's had some issues at times and whatnot. But the main thing with him is just staying healthy. Like he's a good tackle, good right tackle. They just need him to stay healthy. If, they can, if he can stay healthy, then you got yourself a good bookend there at right tackle. So finding, like I said, more depth there would always help out for injuries. Interior-wise, he's still got Big Q rocking. He hasn't had the greatest season. He's still maybe coming back from some of those injuries last year. I, st I think he's going to be fine. You don't have to worry about that. Ryan Kelly, I'm a little bit more concerned, though. Kelly has not looked good. He's really struggled against power. He's really struggled against quickness, too, this season. Just not been the same center that we've seen from Ryan Kelly. I don't know exactly what's going on. He's dealt with some nagging injuries and whatnot, but Kelly's got to get better. We have to see him, and he's getting paid a good contract, too. So we need to see what Ryan Kelly, you know, we saw from Ryan Kelly because we know he can be one of the better centers in the NFL. Right now, he's not playing up to that contract. So I want to bring some more competition, whether it's free agency or a late draft pick. Right guard, you definitely have to upgrade. Will Fries just does not have the power or the quickness to be able to handle NFL strength and everything. So he can be a good backup for you, but you need same thing with Danny Pinter. Those guys you have to upgrade from. And Matt Pryor, I do want to mention real quick, they've tried him in tackle, left tackle early in the season. He was kind of their bring in to be hopefully that guy for this season. And maybe Bernard Ryman is a developmental piece. Pryor has not worked out. He doesn't have the quickness to be able to hold out there off the edge. He's more of a guard, in my opinion, if anything, and more of a backup guard at that. So we'll see, but he, you're going to probably let him go. You need more depth in general in this offensive line. Right guard being maybe the biggest hole right now that you have to fill this offseason and then finding tackle depth in free agency. So overall, quarterback, a priority, the number one priority on this team, and then offensive line, finding some tackle depth, someone who can compete, and then a right guard for the future. You need someone there. And maybe a center to be able to compete with Ryan Kelly, hopefully he gets back to form, but that is something I'll look at later. And then coaching, of course. Jeff Saturday is not going to be the long-term coach, more than likely, 
but he's fun to kill come in here. Now let's go on to the defense. We go. Here's the roster, the free agents, and there's some guys we have to prioritize, no doubt about it. But let's go on to those team needs now on the defense side of the ball for the Indianapolis Colts. And it starts with the defensive line. I think they need another edge rusher because especially with the way that their defense runs, which is very good. I will say they're very well coached and they do a great job. They've got a lot of talent on this roster, which is such a shame. Such a shame. But it is such a shame as those words, kind of a tongue twister. Say that 10 times. Such a shame. Such a shame. But <laughs> anyway, uh, they need to improve Add some more pass rushing here. Because Yannick Ngakwe, I feel like that rating's even a little bit high for him personally. But the dude does get sacks. He makes plays. He's a speedster off the edge. He's really just a pass rushing guy. He is a hunter of the quarterback. You can find that, I feel like, in the second, third round of this draft with the depth. Or and or free agency. To me, you're looking at moving on from him. I'm not looking to pay Yannick Ngakwe a ton of money. Because I want to put that money towards the offensive line. Or maybe some other positions of depth. You can add another pass rusher in cheaper than that, than Yannick Ngakwe. Just, I feel like you can get better rotation. And I talk about going to the scheme real quick with Gus Bradley or whoever, which coach, maybe they get a new coach in here. I think Gus Bradley definitely is not the problem here in this defense because they're doing a great job. This defense is a top 10 defense. And like I said, it is a bit of a shame because they are a Super Bowl contending defense. It's just their offense has been so bad throughout the season. So we'll see. But in terms of the rest of their defensive line, Grover Stewart, DeForest Buckner have been beasts. Grover Stewart has arguably been better at times than Buck Buckner, though, is still really good. He's been an excellent pass rusher for them. Grover Stewart's been a rock on that interior, consistently making plays for them on that defense. So you have a great interior run defense and a pass rush complementation, whatever. And Eric Johnson is a developmental piece. We'll see how that goes along. He's in a rotation. Brian Coward also been in a rotation there, ultimately. And Chris Williams, too, does play as more of a pass rusher on that defensive line. We'll see about Curtis Brooks. See if he can be someone down the line you keep an eye out on. But for the time being, not too worried about that. you got a good rotation on there and that defensive line. Maybe just finding someone with the free agents, finding some depth there wouldn't be a bad option. Quiddy Pay. He's dealt with some injuries throughout the season. Uh, I think he's going to be a great defensive end. And I do still think that he can be a top-tier edge rusher. Maybe he's not a number one, a Miles Garrett, uh, you know, a Micah Parsons, that sort of guy. But I do think he can work his way into a Demarcus Lawrence or, you know, sort of that. Like, I, you know, maybe that's a, not like a comp or anything. But I think he can work his way into a 7 to 10 sack guy a year and be a very productive edge rusher i like what i've seen from quitty pay he's got some things he still needs to work on with his tools with his pass rush ultimately he's a great run defender and he's a good defensive end and he's a guy who's going to be able to get pressure on a quarterback i feel like consistently year in year out and just finding another guy deo dangbo has played decent in his rotation i've seen him make plays on screen and not just watching him i think he's a guy who does have some potential. I still want to bring in some more talent because they do only rush four a lot of times. They're not a very heavy blitz team. So finding more edge talent or more defensive line talent is so critical and why I mentioned it first because I think it is a priority for them is having as much defensive talent, defensive line talent as possible with the fact that they very much rely on their front four getting home. And then on to the cornerback room. This is what I'm going to say right now. You may want to, and you look at the cap situation, you're paying Kenny Moore a good amount you can get out of his contract. Stephon Gilmore not looking to move on. He is worth the money. He's been maybe not like a high New England level play, but he has been really, really good to the point where he's been one of the best corners in the NFL. And he has saved this team in so many which ways. He's had huge plays that have led to wins. He's a player you're keeping, no part, no way you're letting him go. Isaiah Rogers, they need to let him be the starter and play full reps. Like, we need to see him out there be the full-time starter. They put Brandon Faison in there way too much for my liking. And whenever he comes in there, it's like, oh, let's test Brandon Faison. Let's go to number 31 over there. And, hey, that's no knock on Faison. He's a good backup, but I wouldn't want him to be playing out there as much as he's playing. He struggled with tackling. He's let up some big plays in general, so... That is going to be my quorum with that. Let's let Isaiah Rogers, because I do think he could be a good quality starter. He shows a lot of those tools. He's got good length, and I think he's got good speed as well to be able to hang on the outside. 
Kenny Moore has struggled at times. He's in a difficult spot. I will say they put a lot of reliance on that. And especially with NFL teams now, they go after slot receivers and they really try to line them up and get mismatches. Kenny Moore has been devious of letting some plays up. At the same time, he also has made some plays. He is a guy, though, I'm looking at who's getting a little bit older. Do we give him an extension? He's getting paid a good amount of money. We could free up some money. So bringing more competition into that slot room is not a bad idea, and it's something I will consider. Not saying we let go of Kenny Moore because he's still a good player, but at the same time, you may want to look at adding some more prowess there in the corner room. In general, going forward long-term, maybe Stephon Gilmore is not your long, long-term option, but that is something we'll look at. Dallas Flowers, more of a special teamer, showing what he can bring. As a kick returner, I think he's fine for right now. Maybe he can develop into a starter later down the line. They've done a good job of developing guys. Linebacker-wise, I love the linebacking room. One of the best in the NFL. Sire Franklin has been so impressive. I wanted to put him higher than a 78 even. I think this guy is turning into a young star in the game. Underrated player. People need to talk about him. I, I think he is so talented. He can get better in certain areas like coverage and he's still, you know, developing and whatnot. But this dude is a hustler, man. He comes out here and he is putting 100% week in, week out. You can tell he loves football. I love Jair Franklin. I can't say it enough. Bobby Okereke is good too, man. He's like carrot cake. I mean, he's got a great name and he is a good player. So between these two guys, you don't even need Shaquille Griffin. That's the thing about it. I mean, they don't even have him. And he's been injured for the most of the season. If Shaquille Griffin comes back, now you have a great, great three linebacking core of rotation where it's almost difficult, man. But Jair Franklin's basically stepped up into that mic role. And then Bobby Okereke has been their weak side linebacker. They got a good linebacking core. And EJ Speed's even made plays, man, when he's needed to play, make plays. Grant Stewart's been more of a special teamer, but a good special teamer at that. So you want to keep him around. That's totally fine. They've got a great linebacking core. This is not a need at all. On to the safety position. They're in a good position going forward because Rodney Thomas has really stepped up. What was he, a late-round selection out of Yale or Princeton? I forget. it. One of the Ivy League schools. But, man, they've got a steal in Rodney Thompson. This guy can tackle, and he can cover. Like, he's good, man. I know they don't put the, the biggest responsibilities on Rodney Thompson, but he's made some serious plays. And one that's sticking out to me is the um, Chiefs game where he had a big tip pass. I mean, these young, some of this class in general, this rookie class, and I go back to Chris Ballard, he's done a decent job. Alex Pierce has made some huge plays we talked about earlier, like the game winner in Jacksonville. I'm trying to recall some other plays. I mean, the dude has made plays, and he's in recently versus Dallas, making some nice plays. These guys, this young class that they've got in, they they have some potential to be some stars here out here. Nick Cross, we have not seen enough of him just yet. But Nick Cross is another guy I'd like to see play more down the stretch. So making sure you get Nick Cross, Ronnie Thompson, hopefully is your future safety group. Julian Blackman's fine. I think he's a decent guy. He's in that replacement level. But he's a decent starter at the same time. I don't see a ton of plays from Julian Blackman. But at the same time, I don't see him being a liability either. So that is what it is. Now, Rodney McLeod has played well, and they put, you know, they really have, he's been full-time starter since early in the season with Nick Cross, kind of early struggles in the season, which is to be expected. Nick Cross be a developmental project out of Maryland, has all the tools, though, and what they're asking of Nick Cross and Rodney McLeod is to be, it's a tough position for the Colts. They like McLeod to be able to play in the slot, to play in the box, to play up top. Like, he plays in all positions. And a lot of times, it's really Rodney Thompson or Thomas and also Julian Blackman playing those safety positions. And then McLeod's playing in that slot, just depending on the down and distance and things like that. So McLeod plays a tough role. And I will say, McLeod makes a ton of plays. Like, he's he sniffs out screens. He sniffs out tight ends and, and stuff like that. Sniffs out tight ends. But he can cover tight ends. He's a good safety. He's still a starting safety, in my opinion. And if you want to bring him back, if you don't feel great just yet, maybe with Nick Cross, if you want to keep him as a developmental piece, and I understand that. He's a really young player. He's not even 22 years old yet. So between those safeties, though, I feel good. They've got a good group. Maybe, you know, again, maybe need someone who can make some more plays in the back end, find some more interceptions on this defense. Ultimately, they're a very, very good defense. On to free agency, which you see $28 million and some change that they do have. So we're going to be able to add some pieces because they do have some money that they can move slash cut options. And let me just state that real quick. I didn't have space really. I maybe should make that smaller. But also this area is not just for cut options. It's also for restructurings. So when you see guys like DeForest Buckner, Grover Stewart, 
that's more of a restructure rather than a cut. I'm not looking to cut those guys. Like there's no way you were cutting Buckner or <laughs> Grover Stewart. I'm just, you know what I'm saying? But they're a restructure if you wanted to move some money because I feel like those guys are maybe more of your core pieces. I'm okay restructuring core pieces, but at the same time, you have to kind of use that in balance with you know your players and not going too far and looking into the future and and, you know all that so re-signs wise Paris Campbell it's a must you have to re-sign Paris Campbell he's been really good this year the injuries are a concern you're not going to look to pay him like crazy money but at the same time one year three million dollars let's see what he's got and approve a year he is looked really good he could be getting a payday and he's only 25 years old I believe so he's coming into the prime of his career I could see him being a big time target for them going forward. Keep him in that rotation. Deion Jackson's been really good. Maybe you give him a two year sort of extension for maybe like four million dollars or something. He's a good backup running back and a reason why they were able to let go of Nakeem Hines is because Deion Jackson's really stepped up and been a good receiving third down back. Rodney McLeod, I still like him. Uh, you know, if you don't, like I said, want to have more depth slash you want to keep Nick Cross as a rotational guy with Ronnie McLeod, I think that's fine. And then EJ Speed, I'm prioritizing that. That is a must. Get him back as either a special teamer or depth for injuries because that dude can make some plays off the bench as well. He's got some speed. And uh, anyway, on to the sign options. We go and, uh, oh, cut options. Let's not forget about the cut options. So the ones I'm prioritizing, Matt Ryan, you can save $17 million. I know you don't want him to get injured because then I, I think there's a clause or something like that in his contract. Either way, go ahead and let go Matt Ryan. You know, I love Matt Ryan. I think it's time though, probably, you know. He may end up retiring anyway at the end of the season. Uh, Ryan Kelly, talk about this with his contract. Bringing in some competition wouldn't hurt. I'm not letting him go, but at the same time, I'm bringing in competition just in case, or in training camp if someone plays better. Or you could look at free agent and bring in a cheap center to compete with him as well. Those are all options. You could save that money post-June 1st and use that money elsewhere. Those are options. Molly Cox, I'm letting go, letting the pave the way for Jelani Woods and Kylan Grenson. Quarterback, I can go ahead and let go of uh, Nick Foles. I mean, I love Nick Foles, but I think maybe uh, you know we can let go of Nick Foles at this point, save some money. We're not letting go of DeForest Buckner or Grover Stewart or Stephon Gilmore. Not letting go of any of those guys, right? That Those are guys maybe you could restructure if you wanted to make some more money. Bringing in a young quarterback, maybe we say, hey, let's let's make sure we bring in one of these offensive line guys to protect him or bring in another weapon, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's just, so those are restructuring options. Kenny Moore, though, is someone I am thinking about maybe as a cut option, but that comes down to maybe more later down the line or what can we do? How well do we feel like going into the draft? We're going to be able to find a legit replacement. Not going to do it, but I'm just saying that is an option for the Colts that they have to think about, Chris Ballard or whatever GM. And then Roberto Sanchez, you know, again, he's been a fine punter, he's been injured. But at the same time, I mean, we could free up two and you know almost three million dollars, go out and get a punter in UDFA, and we could do something like that, or in the seventh round, who knows? But on to the sign options we go. Here's what I like: I like going after a guy like George Fant because to me, George Fant has played his best work at left tackle. He's been injured for the Jets this year, but he's shown that he can be a quality pass protector. And especially if you're bringing in a rookie quarterback, someone like George Fant would be really good. Isaiah Wynn, I almost say maybe move him into guard at the, you know, but I threw him out as an option. Andre Dillard would be another option. He's a good pass protector. He's played in very limited roles, of course, for the Eagles. He would be definitely be considered a bust for them. But he's a guy, maybe he could be a late bloomer. He's going to be like 28 next year. He's 27 right now. So you could get him in as a backup left tackle to come in to compete with Bernard Ryman. That is what I'm looking to do. Spend around that $5 million like they spent last year. But hopefully you're finding a guy who's better, you feel more confident in, can be a good pass protector for you, you know what I'm saying? Or at least good depth piece. And Because we cannot ignore that. We cannot. Guard-wise, another you know position that I'm looking at here is adding someone like a Phil Hayes, Elijah Wilkerson, Will Hernandez, bringing someone in who could be a day one starter at right guard. We will be looking at it, though, in the draft, no doubt about it, but I have a couple of positions I'm definitely targeting in the draft early, so finding someone that could come in and be a starter early on while we have someone who can draft and develop and we feel good who might be able to start, but at the same time, we want to make sure that that line is secured. Receiver, not too big of a deal. Demarcus Robinson would be a nice fifth option with Michael Stretchen. 
Quarterback-wise, now I will say, if we're bringing in a young quarterback, bringing in a Sam Darnold or a Mike White, somebody be able to start the first four weeks or five weeks or whatever we want to do while that quarterback's getting up to speed would not be a bad option just depending on how we feel. So that is something that we could do. And, you know, we could keep Nick Foles, who'd be cheaper, but or, you know, hey, it, we'll have to figure out some things there. Um, ultimately, at the end of the day, that is an option for them. I mean, I guess you could rock with Sam Ellinger and let him be the starter early on. I mean, he showed that he can be okay in a pinch. On the defensive tackle position, looking at just a backup, a third, you know, fourth defensive tackle. That's all that is with Kalen Sanders or Armin Watts. I think those are rotational pieces, and that's really what we're doing. Same thing with the edge. Now, if you want to take more of a shot, Caden Ellis has been really good for the Saints this year. Underrated player, actually, might I add, but this guy's... Good, and he could be someone that may get paid a lot more than this for the Saints who have been shown to let go of guys. And, you know, it's worked out. Trey Anderson obviously being the most recent, but that's an option you could look to do. Rasheem Green, if you want to steal from the division, option as well. Just bringing in a, uh, a 3 to $7 million pass rusher to be in a rotation with Deo Dangbo and Quiddy Pay, And then also looking at the draft for sure, because I want to make sure we have three to four guys I feel good about. And then corner, just bringing in a fourth guy. That's my view on it. Tavir Thomas, if you want to bring up a backup slot, he'd be someone who you could might say to yourself, hey, Kenny Moore, we could save the money, bring in a Tavir Thomas for cheaper, but that isn't, you know, just things and options. Antonio Hamilton, 10, who has versatility to play in the slot as well. But he's more of an outside guy for the Cardinals as a backup. He's been a fine back or a starter even for the Cardinals. And finally, if you were to let go of Ronnie McLeod, maybe a Deron Harmon if you don't feel comfortable. But that's a maybe and not a priority. The priorities for me are at the offensive tackle and the uh, guard position. And then just depth, you know, on the defensive line. But it is that time. It's mock draft time. And we got the strategy all together. I know we're going to hit. We got it all. I'm telling you, watch out. This is going to be crazy. But here are their draft picks. Nothing too out of the ordinary. You have an extra sixth rounder. And they have their third rounder from the Washington Commanders. So we go on to the actual draft itself. A.R. Anthony Richardson. Oh, I'm so excited. My favorite player in this draft class other than Bryce Young. At least at quarterback position. There's a lot of fun players. I mean, it's hard to say favorite positions, favorite players, all that. Because i got a ton of them. And we'll come out with a My Guys list. But Anthony Richardson is an absolute stud. I believe in him. I think this kid's going to put the work ethic in. He's going to put the time in. And at the end of the day... That is huge, right? He has the tools. He's shown so much progression over this season. And yes, it's just one season. It's hard to say. But to me, from what he did in his first season that he got played limited snaps to this season, even game by game, from the beginning of the season to the end of the season, what Anthony Richardson was able to accomplish and improve upon was so dramatic that it reminds me of what I mean, I'm sorry, I'm making the, I'm not making the comp, but I'm just saying what Josh Allen was able to do out of Wyoming, making those progressions. And as a player, you have to make progressions each year. Anthony Richardson has all the tools to be an elite quarterback at the next level. He could be the next top five quarterback. He could be a complete bust. But I think he's actually got a higher floor than people think because of his rushing ability. If nothing else, you are going to have a great rushing offense between him and Jonathan Taylor. And that's another reason why I think he's a perfect fit. While he's young, while he's developing, you build an offense that's very similar to what the Bears have done in Justin Fields. But the difference is they have a good defense. The Bears do not. They can have a team that can compete right away with Anthony Richardson. In this run game, you're not letting Anthony, you're not saying, hey, Anthony, we need you to throw the ball 30 times. That's silly. You want, or 40 times and all that, right? You want him to run a very 25 passes or so a game and run the ball 10 to 15 times. And I know you're saying, well, that's dangerous. He can get injured. Anybody can get injured. I get it. Ultimately, you don't want him running long term all the time. But early on in his career, with him and Jonathan Taylor, at least run like five to ten times a game to pose that threat for teams. That way they're scheming. They're saying, hey, we have to watch out for this AR guy. He's so dangerous. He's a 4-4 guy, in my opinion. And at six foot four, 232 pounds, the dude will truck people. He'll run over people. He'll run around you, through you, juke you, do all those crazy things. He's such a gifted athlete, crazy arm talent, and the improvements he has made at, with his pocket presence already is huge. Yeah, he still maybe got some technical things and his accuracy, uh, maybe a part of those technical flaws, 
overall, I've seen so much improvement for this guy, and I think he could be a top-tier quarterback, and I'm taking a chance. I like him over C.J. Stroud, over Will Levis. And if you want one of those guys, I think both of them could be there at number nine. I think there's a serious chance that C.J. Stroud is there, depending on how he does versus Georgia in the, in the CFB, P, but... Yeah, I think Anthony Richardson, to me, is worth the top 15 pick. I think he's worth this nine overall selection. I'm taking him. On to our next pick at number two, or in round number two at 41. I'm going Will McDonald. Old McDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. They need more pass rush. That is what I'm going after here. He's going to be a nice replacement for what you lose in Yannick Ngakwe. Will McDonald, in a similar vein, and similar skill set, he's got that speed and explosiveness. He may have been on Bruce Feldman's freaks list. Don't quote me on that. I don't remember exactly, but the dude's explosive. If he wasn't, he should be because he's freaking explosive off the edge. He's got a ton of speed, and this guy's underutilized at Iowa State because the dude had to run at five tech like the entire time, it seemed like, the season. He didn't get the chances that these other edge rushers have gotten off the edge to just say, hey, go after the passer. He had to play five tech and a lot of times he was the guy who had to stop the run and things like that so this dude is even lined up in b gap at times he, he's only six foot four 230 pounds it just goes to show you how much they believe in him with his length and strength to be able to hold up at the point of attack so i feel great about him coming in this scheme and saying hey let's let you loose be a pass rusher this, to me, is a great value on a player who can come in day one and even be a starter. But him, Odeo Odengbo, and Quiddy Pei, I feel like that's a great pass rushing duo. And he would fit. I think he's going to be better long haul than Yannick Ngakwe. On to our next selection. And this is what I was saying earlier. I feel like you can find a nice guard at this third round pick. And while he, you know, Steve Avila, I do think he can come in day one and be a starter. There's other options here. And you got Emil Ekwar and... Maybe if Cooper BB falls to this range, I don't know where he exactly he's going to go. But you're going to be able to find somebody at this point on JV and Cohen is coming back. I think he's entering the transfer portal. But Steve Avila, 6'4", 330 pounds. He can play center. He's played right tackle. He plays guard. This dude can play everywhere on the offensive line. You plug him in at that right guard position, I think he can start day one. He's a monster. He's got some bully strength. He's not maybe the most lateral mover, explosive guy, but he's got a decent enough mobility to get the job done. He's a great pass protector, tried and true on that TCU offensive line. There's a reason why Kendra Miller's been able to run like crazy, and this team's been so good. Their offensive line's been really good. Steve Avila has been a big impact. He could come in here and be a him, him, huge impact for the Indianapolis Colts at that right guard position. We go on to Jacorian Bennett out of Maryland, going back to Maryland and finding another freak athlete. This guy is a very good athlete. He's going to get his chance at the Senior Bowl. I'm pretty sure he got a Senior Bowl invite. I, I think he's going to be there. But keep an eye out on this guy. He could be a riser, has those athletic tools you look for. I think he could play in the slot. He could play outside. I think he's got skills to play in both areas. But bringing in more competition into this cornerback room, either in that slot or going forward in, at the boundary for the future because he is a bit of a developmental project in coverage, going to need some time more than likely. Overall, he does have some serious skills, and I think you could take a chance on him. At 5'11", 195, probably going to run 4'4", maybe even eh, probably 4'4". On to our next pick, it's going to be Jalen Cropper. This dude's solid. I mean, I like him a lot. Him and Jay Kaner have been really good. They've been a fun tandem at, at Fresno State, and they've been they've been winning games, man. But Jalen Cropper, their number one receiver, and he's been solid, man. And I think ultimately he ends up in the slot at the next level just with his slender build. How does he hold up against physicality will be a great question. He's been playing out wide prim primarily at Fresno, but I think a shift to the slot at the next level is going to be where he ends up at. But he's got enough speed and quickness to be able to make defenders miss in the open field. Not the most, you know, agile and speedster threat or anything where he's going to threaten people consistently over the top. But as a slot receiver, I think he can be good. He's got good quicks in that department. He needs to build out his frame a little bit more, get a little stronger at the catch point. He's done a better job in general with not fumbling the ball this year. And, you know, he's decent with his hands too, relatively reliable. Drop rate has not been a bit of an issue, really big issue, other than like the Wyoming game for him where he struggled. But overall, he's been really good this season and throughout his career. So finding a fifth round dart throw and, you know, to be a fourth, fifth option for you. Next one, Fabian Levette out of Florida State. And Levette is a guy who has a lot of tools potentially i mean he's not 
super speedster guy, right? He's not going to be your date. I mean, I guess he could be. He's a senior bowl guy too. So we'll see how he does in the one-on-ones. Ultimately, for me, he's a day three guy. He's in that fifth round conversation, sixth round. But he does have some potential there, and he can hold up at the point of attack. He's got some decent tools to his game. I see him more as a good run defender, not really a pass rusher, at least at the moment. He doesn't really have a whole ton of pass rushing tools. So we'll see how it goes. But Fabian Levette here in the sixth round as a developmental guy with like a Curtis Brooks and, you know, an Eric Johnson, just in that similar vein. Maybe he goes earlier than this, but just basically finding a, another, you know, defensive tackle as some depth here on this line. Finally, or not finally, one more pick after this, but an ultimate pick. It's Juice Shrugs out of Penn State. Just bringing some more competition here from Penn State. This guy is going to be probably just a backup center throughout his career, but you never know. He's got some decent tools and enough to be able to compete for a starting job, and that's why go ahead and take a chance on him here as he can develop and get a little bit stronger and all those things that you need. He's got some good strength, just the movement skills maybe limit him a little bit at the next level. On to our next one. It's going to be Sean Tyler. He's a really interesting player. And, you know, talk about another, like, moldable project out of Western Michigan. This guy's got a little bit of Bronco to him, and he's got a little speed to his game. He's a little bit on the smaller side. But if you're talking about, you know, Naheem Hines, uh, Deion Jackson, you know, behind him sort of thing, this guy can be that dude in the seventh round. And maybe he's just a special teamer early on in his career. Could add some, you know, with Dallas Flowers if you want to compete or whatever. But Sean Tyler here in the seventh round, just as depth at that running back position. And here's the recap of our draft and what we were able to do with these selections. Let's go ahead and get his Santa Claus. He's flying by, man. We're almost there. But, yeah, we're getting close. We've got like 18 more days. Wild, man. Anyway, here's the roster after the draft and what we've been able to do. Coaching, GM will be a big question going into this offseason, of course. I like Chris Ballard. I think you keep him for at least another year or two and see what he can do. Got to draft the quarterback. Give him that chance. And then finding that head coach for the long haul. Anthony Richardson, though, guy, would be, um, to me, would be an awesome addition to this roster. Their offensive line, we can make some improvements. Free agent, I highlight in red for behind Bernard Ryman because I think that is a must-priority thing, bringing more competition to have there because I believe in Bernard Ryman. I think he's going to get better, but at the same time, I'm not banking completely on it. And just, you know, for injuries, too, with Braden Smith, we bring in a free agent at guard, too, bring in some depth there at center behind Wesley French. But Steve Avila, I feel like could be a starter day number one. And in that third round, I feel like you can find a good prospect in there, and we'll see how that all goes. But that is kind of my view on this and what we've been able to do on the offense. Also add in Jalen Cropper, Sean Tyler, as some depth pieces for this team. Make sure we bring back Paris Campbell. But I am just loving what you can do with this offense with Anthony Richardson and saying, hey, we are going to be a dynamic run offense early on while Anthony Richardson gets going. You get to this because you have an offensive line that's built to, to run the ball still. So Anthony Richardson, Jonathan Taylor, they are going to be steamrolling over people so just to, like i said imagine what you can do with anthony richardson and his threat to run jonathan taylor is going to average six yards a carry i'm just saying he's going to be dominant on to the defense as long as he can stay healthy of course defense we go and no no changes to the linebacker position i think this is one of the best like i said earlier in the nfl safety wise no changes either no draft picks i love what they have going forward with ronnie thomas and nick cross in the future but for the time being if you want to bring back ronnie mcleod or someone else you know maybe nick cross is ready to go or ronnie thomas you step up there jacorian bennett could also be playing a little bit there too for them in rotations but i feel good about the safety group cornerback we're bringing some more help and i just put jacorian bennett as a competition in the slot he may be more of an outside corner but I do think he could be a slot player too I think he has versatility to be able to play in both decent tackler too bringing a free agent as a fourth fifth corner with Dallas Flowers being maybe more of a special teamer maybe a developmental long-term project but we'll see how that all goes defensive line wise Deo Dangbo would be more likely fitted into that starting role however I think Will McDonald would carve out a big role especially filling in for like a Yannick Ngakwe sort of role so i love what he could do in that position as a go after get after the quarterback guy with quitty pay deo dangbo bringing in another free agent as your fourth guy but that rotation is something obviously you're gonna have more depth than this this is just you know cleaning up the roster to showcase things but that is your rotation and then into your defensive line wise 
you don't need to do much. I just bring in a free agent as a third, fourth option. You know, that's fine with Brian Coward. Maybe let him go as a backup run defender. Fabian Levette as a developmental vet. I don't know, not quite, but it uh, didn't quite work out. But anyway, Eric Johnson as well, you know, continuing to develop. And you can keep Curtis Brooks around, who I think is a restricted or just a free agent. They may have cut him and then re-signed him back on a practice or whatever. But that is it here for the Indianapolis Colts. Let me know what you think, and uh, hopefully we were able to fix the Colts. But my biggest thing is let's get the quarterback of the future and no more gambling with trading and doing all that stuff. Let's go out and get that franchise quarterback, hopefully, right? Take the chance. I love Anthony Richardson. Whether you like Will Levis, who I think it might be more of a reasonable, realistic pick for the Colts because he's more of a day one starter. I believe Anthony Richardson, though, can be a day one starter. People say, oh, he's a two-year project. He might be a bit of a two-year project in terms of getting to that elite level, but I think every quarterback, for the most part, is, except for maybe Bryce Young and guys like you know Joe Burrow. There's certain guys that can come in right away, but at the same time, you don't expect him to play any of these rookie quarterbacks to be like elite top five quarterbacks right away. It's going to take a couple of years. In the same way I feel about Anthony Richardson, at the end of the day, it's a two- to three-year thing. It doesn't matter which quarterback you're drafting. It's going to take a couple of years, so... Why not go ahead and go all in on Anthony Richardson? If he puts the work in like what I think he's going to, he can be that elite quarterback with those tools. And in the meantime, you can build a great run game with Jonathan Taylor and Anthony Richardson and have a more potent offense, a more explosive offense, because Anthony Richardson can throw the ball deep to Alex Pierce. He's got arm strength. He can throw that thing, man. He's going to get more deep plays, more explosive plays in general, whether it's running or throwing the ball. And Jonathan Taylor eating, getting six yards a carry. This offense is going to be way more explosive than it has been. Help out this defense, which can win now. This team could legit be a playoff team year number one. That's my opinion of it with Anthony Richardson. So let me know. That is it, though, for the Indianapolis Colts. I hope everyone has a really good day. Let me know what you think. And if you ever want to hunt me down, you're like, oh, I hate this G-Sling character. Hey, man, I love Indy. I live here. I'm Noblesville. Rock me out. But <laughs> come humping me down now. But anyway, I'll, <laughs> I'll talk to you later.